Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. May be experienced on the inside. May we work it out into our world we live in. May we understand, Holy Spirit, that you're doing a work in our heart. Because you've already done the work in our spirit. Yes. May our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions line up with what your word says instead of what the world says. May we understand the battle is for our soul. And we surrender that to you. Help us repent, Holy Spirit. Help us change the way we think. May we think in line with your word. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to John chapter chapter 8. John chapter 8. Joy's going to put all the scriptures up on the board. And if you want a Bible, we have some. Uh, Joy, go ahead and put that last one you just had on there back up there. Oh, no, okay. That, that's the theme for the, uh, the camp. Did you want the guy in the water? What? You wanted the one... No, that's just fine. And um, for those online, we are having this. All right, John chapter 8, Joy. Verse 30. And again, before we get started, I want, well, to help you understand what we're talking about, if I should have erased this because that had to do with the, the book that's being written, but, but uh, if you see the cross there on the board, what we need to understand is that, is, is my wife being disturbed here? That, that everything left of the cross Everything left of the cross has to go through the cross. Yes. This is where most people misunderstand and they, 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 it, the, the scripture gets confusing to them. Yeah. Because some things are said on one side of the cross that don't translate to the right side of the cross. The teaching we just did for the last three, three months almost was separating the old covenant from the new covenant. The scripture says it. In 2 Timothy, rightly dividing the word of... Okay, everybody knows that verse. Everybody say it nice and loud. Separating the word of... Truth. truth. See, God's word is what? True. But there has to be some understanding of how it's applied and when and where it's applied and who it's applied to. So we need to understand that you just can't take all of Scripture and apply it to your life. Because all those scriptures not written to you and not necessarily can you apply it. Now all scriptures for you, but it's not to you. There's some things written to the Jews that doesn't apply to you. You don't have to sacrifice sheep. Right? See, that's in the word of God. <laughs> you know, now we love to sacrifice beef. Some of you are sheep eaters, but I'm a beef eater, okay? I love to sacrifice it. But 
So we need to understand. That now, now, understanding this principle, you have to understand that there's four books called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Jesus taught, his teachings are recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All the chapters in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, except for the last two chapters in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are on the left side of the cross. Some of the teachings that Jesus taught on the left side of the cross was for the Jewish people under the Old Covenant. Not for the believers in the New Covenant on the right side of the cross. Most people say, well, if it's in red, I believe it. Well, believe it, but some of it you can't. Okay, how many people have cut off their hands? Not me, like Jesus said, if your right hand offends you, what? Cut it off. Cut it off. If your eye offends you, what? Pluck it off. How come our songs aren't lifting holy nose? You know, I mean, some of the teachings of Jesus, listen to me, don't turn me off when I say this. There's people listening on YouTube and they're going to they're gonna shut me off because they're going to hear this. Some, I, I, I capitalize the word some, of the teachings of Jesus will leave you blind, maimed, and hopeless. <laughs> Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you have no hope. He was talking to regular, normal, God-loving, religious Jewish people that were under the law. <clears throat> the problem is, we in the church, we just take it all and lump it all together and throw it out there as the gospel. That doesn't sound like good news to me. You know, how come we hear a message of good news when we're... To, we, 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 promote the gospel as good news, which that's what their gospel means, to the lost, to get them to come in the church, and then all of a sudden we give them the bad news. <laughs> now you've got to keep it. You can't do this. You can't do that. You gotta, if you do this, you lose it. You know, one, one of the statements that we're um, working on for this weekend, you know, I, I, I'm just going to, of course, that's what's been going through my heart and mind, but, you know, there are, how many people know God hates abortion? Yes. Well, God hates abortion. There's people that holler and stand, and, 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 and that's good. I'm glad we do. But there are some of those people that holler that how God hates killing children. And they turn around and preach that when you sin, God separates you from him and aborts you. Oh, oh, because, oh, we, we don't live, we don't live like we're supposed to, so God's going to abort us. You've lost your salvation. You need to think about that. God hates abortion. And if you're born from above, you got the spirit of Christ inside of you. He's not going to abort you. I'll leave that one alone. All right. We were not going to talk about that tonight, but that came out. So there it is. All right. John chapter 8. I love this passage of Scripture. We're going to shed some other light on it, I think, tonight than we have before in the past. John chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 30. Uh, before we get talking about that, he's talking to Pharisees, to Jewish people. Uh, there's a whole group of people around him. And uh, he's trying to explain some things. And there's some people there within the group, including the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees, actually believed in Jesus. It says in verse, verse 30, As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Can you say believed in him? Believed in they him. believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him. They were believers. Can you call them believers? Absolutely. They believed in his words. They believed him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him. Now who's he speaking to? The Jews, the Jews that believed him. There were some there that didn't believe him. 
So now he's focusing on a group of people that believed him. Then Jesus said to those who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Now, wait a minute. Is there a difference between a believer and a disciple? Oh, you may want to think about that. I think there is. You know, it says, so he's talking to believers, people that believed his word. Now he said, listen, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. He didn't call them disciples. He just said, if you abide in my word. Now, what is his word? His word is what? Truth. God's, Jesus' word is truth. This, and I've got, we're not going to read all the scriptures. You know what this is. His word is truth. So the word of Jesus is truth. The truth will set you free. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Free from what? From being a slave. Free from your own opinion. See, a disciple is someone we need, we need to get. See, there's lots of believers. No. <clears throat> Let me back up even further than that. He's talking to Jewish people, the most religious people on the planet. Can we call them church people? No, I need some head shaking yeah. or something. Can we call these people church people? Yeah. Who's the most religious people in America? Say church people. Church people. Yeah. So he's talking to believers and not all of our disciples. He said, if you want to be a disciple, you have to believe my words. His word is truth. See, what most believers believe, they believe in his words. You know, they believe in what he's saying, but they don't believe what the word say it says about them. See, the truest thing about you is what God says about you, not your opinion of you. Uh-oh. Some people, there are some people who believe that they're no good because of what they've done in the past. And if a person believes that, see, just because you believe something, it doesn't mean it's truth. How many people ever believe something found out later it was wrong? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand, everybody. Yeah. If you were wrong once before, <laughs> well, you might be. <laughs> yeah, I won't go any further with that one. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, just because you believe it, there's lots of, there's, there's quiet in the back. <laughs> just because you believe it, it doesn't mean it's true. It may be true that you've done some things in the past that some people call big acts of stupid. <laughs> you may not have big acts of stupid before. Jerry, raise your hand. No. <laughs> Jerry didn't raise his hand. Neither did Dan. <laughs> Listen, but that doesn't see what does the word what does the word say about you? What does God's truth, God's view and opinion of you? See, when you think your opinion, when you live according to your opinion, you're saying your opinion is greater than God's word. And the truth is not in you. Wow. See, there's lots of believers, but there's not a lot of disciples. This is a, literally saying, I should have read the whole thing, because this is literally saying that you can be a believer and still be a slave. Then Jesus said to those who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And what's abiding in his word? In his truth. Are we abiding in what the words, what the truth says about us? You know, God, the scripture says God cannot lie. We talk about this when we talk about the Lord's Prayer. Does anybody remember us talking about the Lord's Prayer? I know that hurts a lot of religious people. I tell you. Uh, uh, I don't know if I, I... I do it all the time, so it really doesn't matter. The Lord's Prayer was on what side of the cross? The, other, the left side. The left side yeah. Put the cross back up there. I mean, the, the thing. Mm -hmm. Or if you can just put a cross up there, it doesn't matter what kind of cross. Doesn't the word abide mean to follow? It, it says to live within. To live within. To partake of. 
Actually, the word the word no here is really what we're going to get to. The word no is the word gnosko in Greek. It means that just not have knowledge, but have experience. You've experienced this. So if you if if you've experienced the word, no, if the word says you're loved by him and you've experienced that love, you've gnoskoed, you have knowledge of, you know. See, it's one thing to have head knowledge. It's another thing to have heart experience. And that, that, that's what this is talking about. But on the left side of the cross is the Lord's Prayer. We, we, we love to mess people up. Now, if you don't want to believe this, you just go ahead and just believe what you want to believe. Just remember, just because you believe something doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> Same with me. But at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he taught the 12 disciples how to pray. It's called the Lord's Prayer. At the end of his ministry, right before Calvary, he took the same, at this time it was 11. He, he brought them together and said, listen, there's going to be a day that I'm not with you. He's talking about after Calvary. He says, and in that day, pray this way. What do you ask the Father in my name? It'll be done. So does that mean he dis he put an end to the Lord's Prayer? Huh. Have you ever stopped and thought about the Lord's Prayer? Or you just spouted that out of your mouth because everybody else did. This is what I do to people to, that think the Lord's Prayer is something you're still supposed to be praying today. There's nothing wrong with praying it. Pray it if you want to. But you're praying old covenant realities. Everything in there is old covenant. Everything. Even where God's at. Our Father who art in heaven. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Doesn't the new covenant say he's in here? In our hearts. See, it's called separation theology. That God is up there and we're down here. That theology creates an anxiety in your system. A separation. That you're, you're, you've got to work your way up instead of working your way out. Uh, the, 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 very, the very scripture it, 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 it says that God cannot lie and that same scripture says God cannot lie it says he tempts no one and cannot tempt anyone but in the Lord's prayer it says lead us not into temptation wait a minute asking God not to do something that he can't do that's a pretty safe prayer yeah. you see what I'm saying well, on the mixed up side so see, in the Old Covenant, God tempted Israel. Is what the scripture says. But in the New Covenant, he can't tempt anymore. He doesn't tempt. He can't lie. If God said, oh, the sky is brown, guess what? It would be brown. Because he can't lie. So let's go on. So with this, we need to understand, it says, Then Jesus said to the Jews, to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. truth. That word know is that word gnosko. It means to have an intimate person. It's, this, it's not the same word, but in Hebrew, the word is called yada. And it's mentioned in, in, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Adam knew Eve, and they had children. That's the degree of intimacy the word... The word yada and gnosko, yada is Hebrew, gnosko is Greek, and, and that's the, the, to the degree of knowledge that you have when it says, and you shall know the truth, that you will have experience with the truth, that it will move you. Have you ever had knowledge that moved you? Oh, yeah. Got a question. You ever look up in a rear mirror when you're driving down the road and you're going too fast, and there's some lights behind you go, woo, woo, woo. See, that's a form of knowledge. And guess what? It moves you. <laughs> you might say a few yeah. choice words like, get my billfold, honey. No, that's, that's not what someone would say. But anyway, you know, it moves. That's, a not, that's something you're experiencing. It moves you. It says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. Free. Now, I've got a question. Who is the message of freedom? Jesus. Let me finish. Who's the message of freedom spoken to? Free people? Slaves. Thank you. 
So who is he talking to again? Believers. Church people. Jewish religious people. And he's telling them, by telling them his truth will make them free means they're in bondage at the moment. Do you see that? He wouldn't be speaking a message of freedom to free people. He's speaking a message of freedom to slaves under the law. Man. People who are well have no need of a doctor. What, what makes you a slave? What made them a slave? Everybody say the law. Uh, uh, mm. I don't have time to get into all that. But the law is what makes you a slave. Mm -hmm. I love this part. Now we could talk about more of that, but we got more things to crucify here. Verse 33, they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. And have never been in bondage to anyone. anyone. Oh, really? This is the funniest scripture in all the Bible. When weren't they in bondage? That's the question we should be asking. I can think of the Egyptians. I can think of the Babylonians. At this very moment in time, I can think of the Romans. They've never been, well, I can't say never, but they've never been free. See, when you're under the law, a slave, you're deceived. And you don't think you are. See, a person that's deceived doesn't know he's deceived. Because the truth is not in him. See, if the truth is... See, if your opinion of you is so strong, you're not following the opinion of God... The truth is not in you and you're deceived. In other words, you're believing a lie. I'm believing a lie if I believe that I am what I was in the past. I'm believing a lie if I make my future subject to what I've done in the past. I'm not believing the truth. My opinion of my doing is bigger than... God's opinion of Jesus is doing. See, God didn't make human doings. Huh. I'll leave that alone. He made yeah. human beings. <laughs> they answered him, we are Abraham's... Now look at this. Abraham's descendant. I've got to jump on this with a two-by-four and a sledgehammer. Which side of the cross are they focused on? The left yeah. side of cross. Who are they identifying as their source of their identity? Moses. Abraham. Oh. Abraham. Say Abraham. Abraham. They're looking at Abraham as the source of their identity. And then, well, then what's wrong with that? Well, let's just look at some other scripture. Now, there's many places talking about a Jew and this and God, God can make a Jew from these stones, Jesus said. You know, John the Baptist said that. He said, God can make Jews from these stones, or descendants of Abraham, he should say. He said, I can make descendant, God can make descendants of Abraham from these stones. Listen, look at Galatians chapter 4. We're not going to get in this tonight in fullness, but we are going to bring it up. Because their whole issue is they're basing their identity on Abraham. Man, I tell you what, this is so fun to do this. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. If you've never seen this, you need to see this. What is the big, everybody said, who's your daddy? You know, then, who's your daddy? Who's your, where do you come from? Who's your daddy? What race are you? Are you German? Are you Texan? <laughs> You know, we're, we're a country to ourselves. Who's your daddy? But listen to what it says. Now, Galatians is on what side of the cross? The right side. The right side of the cross. Listen to that. <coughs> Verse 21. Tell me you who desire to be under the law. Does that mean? Tell me you who desire to be under the law. 
Do you not hear the law? No. What puts you in slavery? The law. <laughs> don't, don't, don't change that. Leave it right there. Let me read a, a scripture out of Hebrews for you. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. It says this. Let me get there. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. It says. Inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood. He himself likewise shared in the same. That through death he might destroy him. Who had the power of death, that is the devil, verse 15. And release, say release, release. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to what? Bondage. So this is talking about the Jewish people under the law. They were subject to bondage all their lifetime. Why? Because they were fearful of death. Why were they fearful of death? Because the the law of sin and death reigned. If you sin, you die unless there's a sacrifice for your sin. Even David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, there was a shadow of death with the law. Remember, the law is a type and shadow of good things to come. Look what it says here. And release those who fear death were all their lifetime subject to what? Bondage. So let's go back over to Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham, uh, Father Abraham, yep. he's the father of our what? Faith. Faith. And we've heard that in church, but you haven't heard what we're fixing to read. Because our mind is stuck on the left side of the cross. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by the bondwoman, the other by the Dream. Now we know that's Hagar and Sarah. Does everybody understand that story? Shake your head so I know where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> but he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh. We get into that in detail in past teaching. And he of the free woman was through the promise. Verse 24 is huge. Which things are symbolic. These two women are symbolic. These two sons are symbolic. Abraham is not symbolic. Which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants. What covenants? Old covenant, new covenant. Left side of the cross, right side of the cross. Duh, right? For these things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai. Left side of the cross, which gives birth to bondage. bondage. What does the left side of the cross? Slaves. <clears throat> It's the law. Uh, and it gives birth to bondage. Why? Because fear of death. Just what we read in the book of Hebrews. Which gives birth to bondage. Which is what? Hey, hey. Hagar. Hagar. The Bible. What, what? It's a promise of the. It's called the flesh. Yeah. Do you realize the scripture actually calls. The law of Moses. The law of the flesh. Yeah. Which is Hagar. <laughs> For this Hagar, the woman, symbolic, is Mount Sinai. Sinai. In Arabia. Mm. Wow. Which is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is. That's the religious Jerusalem. <clears throat> the church people. And is in bondage with her children. The same bondage that we talked about in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15. But the, the Jerusalem above is what? Free. Free. Which is the mother of us oh. all. Who's your mama? So the question isn't, who's your daddy? The question is, who's your mama? <laughs> because faith went into both of them. Yeah. 
Abraham, I'm just going to say, Abraham impregnated. He yachted. <laughs> he yachted both of them. It's Old, old Testament, honey. You can't use Gnosis for that. He yachted. He went, he yachted. He, 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 <laughs> he had intimate relationship with both of them. He planted his seed in both of them. So the question is, who's you? Because see, he, even the Muslims can say Abraham's our father. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why the Bible said it really starts with Isaac. Yeah. But it really determines on who's your mama. See, you've got a question. Are, you, are we claiming that we're the seed of Abraham? Everybody does. Are we saying we're the offspring of Sarah? Are we the new Jerusalem? Are we the new covenant believers? Remember, it's, these two women are symbolic of the two covenants. Man, the truth will what? <coughs> The truth was, I, I, love, I love to do this. People, that is one of the most partial scriptures that's ever quoted. There's two, two partial scriptures that people quote. The truth that sets you free and no weapon formed against you will prosper. Those two are the, probably the most partial scriptures that are quoted. Yeah. And when people say, well, the truth that sets you free, I love to look at them and go, from what? <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I just quote the scripture. It's just in her head. They don't know what they're being set free from. Slavery. Yes. Bondage. The truth will set you free from your opinion about you. The truth will set you free into God's opinion about you. That's why... Look at... Uh, Philemon 1 6. I think we brought this up last week. Philemon 1 6. That the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of what? Every good thing that is in you. In Christ Jesus. Why can you say there's good things in you? Because in Christ Jesus, you have all the inheritance that he does. You have all the truth that he does. Every See, Jesus is inside you. He's not outside of you. In the old covenant, on the left side of the cross, God was where? On the outside up here. On the this side of the, the right side of the cross, even when Jesus was on earth, he's called Emmanuel. What's that? God, God with, us. with us, but he wasn't in them. But that was the revelation of the mystery that the Apostle Paul had in Galatians when he says <coughs> that, it, Christ, yes. it, that Christ in me, the hope of glory. That it wasn't Christ up here. It wasn't God up here. There was no separation anymore. E even Paul says, neither height nor depth nor all will ever separate me. See, the new covenant takes away separation theology. And takes away all the anxiety of not... See, let me explain this. Jesus hanging on a cross, he said, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Do you feel the separation? And in the next breath, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. There's no separation. When he sees God as Father, there's no separation. When he sees God as God, they're separate. When the Son of Man cries out, they're separation. The Son of Man cried out, my God. The Son of God cried out, my Father. How are we crying out? Do we still see God as God? Do we still feel separated? You can be a believer. And not know the truth. But the truth, it has set you free from your opinion of you. And you'll start believing what God says about you. <coughs> that you're part of the beloved. That you're one. 
Man, people just... See, your spirit is made perfect. Your three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is made perfect. Let me see if I can find this scripture in 1 Corinthians. Hold on a second. Chapter 6, verse 17. Put that on the board, Joe. <clears throat> can I say it any better than that? See, the, this is God's Word. Hmm. And God's Word says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Hear any separation in that one? <clears throat> but there's people out there that teach fear. If you don't do everything just right, You're going to hell. Let me put it this way. If you don't do everything just right, God will abort you. He doesn't believe in abortion, people. You know, the only babies that are aborted are the ones that aren't loved. You ever thought about that? And people think God's going to abort the ones he loves? Get back in the bottom, start the middle. Get back to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus actually, most surely I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Now let me explain this. This is what I call spiritual dyslexia or theological dyslexia. I think I like the word theological dyslexia better. Let's write that down, Joy, okay? Instead of spiritual dyslexia. I've always said spiritual dyslexia, but really it's not spiritual dyslexia. It's theological dyslexia. And what is theological dyslexia? Does everybody know what dyslexia is? Okay. Well, since I'm an expert at dyslexia, <laughs> I've lived my whole life there, okay? Let me explain. I'm going to put it in simple terms. You ever heard the term wag the dog? I've heard wag the dog. Anybody? Wave your hand. Out, out of 400 people that are in this room right now, because see, it's people on Facebook, they don't know there's not 400 people. Does everybody know what the term wag the dog mean? Don't wag know, the dog? I don't know what it means. I've heard it before. What, what does a do dog wag its tail? Yes. Does the tail wag the dog? No. Yeah, yeah, see, what? that's the problem. No, the, the, that's, that's theological dyslexia. This verse is not saying if you sin, you're a slave to sin. That's what it says. Or is it saying that if you're a slave to sin, you're going to sin? Is it identifying that if you're sinning, you're a slave to sin? <laughs> See, that is theological dyslexia. Let me put it in another way. If you sin, does that make you a sinner? Don't shake your head yes, I will slap you. <laughs> Man, yes, no. <laughs> well, if you commit a murder, does that make you a murderer? In God's, according <laughs> to what the... You're a sinner whether you sin or not. Yeah, we were staying. You're a sinner because Adam sinned. Sure. You're born into sin. You're born a sinner. Yes. Your nature is a man's nature, not God's nature. You have the nature of Adam inside of you. Whether you sin or not, you're a sinner. So you do what's just natural. What's natural? The, what's the most natural thing for a sinner to do? Sin. 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 What's the most natural thing for a slave to do? Wow. From fear. Wow. From fear. Wow. What's the most natural thing for a son to do? Wow. 
So a man thinks in his mind or heart, so is he. I tell, I, I, I remember, well, I won't go back to my memory things. I, I, we've preached all over, all the way down to New Zealand even. And I remember New Zealand. And this, this happens everywhere. I ask people, how many sinners saved by grace in this building today? You know how many people raise their hand? All of them. You're not a sinner saved by grace. See, if you think that, the truth hasn't set you free. You were a sinner that was saved by grace. Now you're a king's kid. You're a son. You're, you're a saint that has a sin problem. Stop it! God's given you grace to overcome the sin. But your actions don't make you a sinner. Who you are should... What you do doesn't make you what you are. What you are should determine what you do. How many times did Jesus talk about a good tree produces what? Good fruit. Good fruit. The fruit doesn't determine the tree. The tree determines the fruit. But yet in church, then what do we do? We judge ourselves according to our outside actions. It's called performance-based Christianity. It'll keep you being a believer, but never being a disciple. Hmm. I think there's some words in red that say, all the thought, see the Great Commission doesn't start with go ye. I know you've been taught that, but read what it says. It says, all authority has been given unto me. Now I give it unto you. Go ye. He doesn't send you out to make disciples without the authority to do so. God makes the converts. You can't sell the gospel. You can't say something just, right? It comes via revelation. It comes from the heart. See, most people have accepted Scripture in their head. They haven't received it in their heart. But in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it's saying plainly that it's of the heart. It's of the heart, people. Romans 10, 10 says this. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Not the head. It's a, it's a gnosko. <gasps> Revelation is... Oh, God chose me before the foundations of the world. That I should be holy and blameless and before him in love. Put Ephesians chapter three, verse uh, chapter one, verse two and three. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him. When? Before Genesis 1. Before the foundations of this world was established, he chose you to be in judgment, wrath, and condemnation? Under the law? No. Before the foundations of the world that we should be what? Holy, without blame. And before him. How special are you? Very. See if you don't believe you're very special. You don't know the truth. But Jesus said. That his word. His truth. Would what? Set you free from your opinion of yourself. And you'll start living in his opinion of you. See, when you look at your opinion of yourself, you're looking at, when we look at ourselves, we're looking at our sin, our actions, what we do and what we don't do. Your sin consciousness. You have a sin consciousness. Instead of a him Consciousness. When you start looking at what he's done for you, 
by taking on your sin and releasing you from it so you can be born 1 Peter 1 23 put 1 Peter 1 23 1 Peter 1 23 I love the, I love I love I love every time I hear someone say born again I want to stop them I don't shake them I'd like to there's nothing wrong with the cup but Jesus even had this this problem in his teaching, okay? Can you believe Jesus had a problem with his teaching? One night late, there in the darkness, there was this guy that came up to Jesus. And he can't figure out why Jesus is talking about being born again. And this guy says, how can a man go back into his mother's womb? You ever had that? Yeah. You think of that? See, born again puts it on the human level. But the proper translation of every time it says born again is not the phrase born again. It's born from above. See, if you start saying instead of born again, saying you're born from above, it takes, your, it takes this. You, you're, you're not thinking, well, how can I go back in my mama's womb? No. You're thinking, oh, I'm born. See, we were born this way of water, and now we're born of the Spirit. The Scripture says unless a man is born of water and of Spirit, that's why aliens can't get saved. <laughs> they're not born of the water. Unless their mama's water broke out of the door. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about our alien birth rights, but when you say born from above, it's saying, okay, I'm birthed from heaven. And that's what this, having been born again, or having been born from above, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word. And what's the word? Truth. Let me just read it that way. Have been born from above, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the truth of God. You can't separate God's word from his truth. Wow. Which lives and abides what? Ever. So you're born from above with what? An incorruptible seed. And like we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says that if you're joined with God, you have the you're joined in the spirit with God. Man. But he who is joined to the Lord. Is one spirit with him. And where is he seated? At the right hand of the Father. Full of glory. We're going to close with this. I read this maybe 20 or 30 times during the year. Oh, by the way, let, 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 well, we won't go there. I got so mm -hmm. much. Just, I, do. <coughs> I don't know why I bother with notes. Let me just read this. Since I picked on the Lord's Prayer, by the way, all six of those requests in the Lord's Prayer are Old Covenant requests. Challenge me if you'd like to. Come on. <laughs> no, no, never mind. But in John chapter 17, it's what I call the Lord's Prayer. This is the Lord's Prayer. Matter of fact, Joy, when we end, Joy's going to put up on the board after we get done with this, the new covenant Lord's Prayer. It's the old covenant with truth to it. You got it? And I think we even have those printed out. But... Rewritten in love by Susie Rinkenberger. <laughs> but I'm going to start at verse 20 in John chapter 17. This is the Lord's Prayer. He just got through praying to the Father about his disciples, the twelve that followed him. And then he turns his attention to us, to the rest of us. This is the prayer before he goes to the cross, people. This is the intent of everything that Jesus did. No matter what theology you have, this, and I believe with all my heart, God answered. His Father answered this prayer. I do not pray for these alone, speaking of the twelve. 
but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one. one. Let's try that again. That they all may be one. one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one, one in us. That the world may believe. Not so you can go to heaven. The gospel is not about you going to heaven. It's about you finding hell on earth and bringing heaven to it. Yes, you'll go to heaven if you pass from this earth and get out of this earth tent before the rapture comes. You're going to heaven. But while you're here, the goal is not to get out of here. Your goal is to bring heaven to hell on earth. Verse 21 again. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me. That's the motivation. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Remember, you're in him. So you're full of glory. Do you see yourself that way? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 says, when you look into a mirror clearly without the law, you see the glory of the Lord. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? You don't see Jesus. I got people telling you see Jesus. No, you don't. You see you. Full of glory. The way God sees you. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Do you see yourself full of glory? That they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me. That they may be made perfect in one. In what they do? How they act, the denomination they go to, there's freer people in prison than there are in the church. There's more slaves in bondage in the church than there are in prisons. And that uh, the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation, foundation of the world. Love comes before glory. Glory is the fruit of God's love for you. Man. Oh righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I've known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. That is the Lord's Prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give us to gather together. This is your place. Holy Spirit, you truly are the great teacher. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst. Help us repent. Help us change the way we think. And may the truth set us free from a wrong opinion about who we are because of what we do. All God's people said, amen. Amen. amen and amen. And for online, can you read that one? Our Father who has chosen to live in me, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom has come. Your will has been done on earth as it is in heaven. You've given me everything pertaining to life and godliness. You have forgiven my trespasses, so I choose to forgive those who trespass against me. That's awesome. You never lead me into temptation, for you have delivered me from evil by nailing it to the cross. 
Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. That's the New Covenant version of the Lord's Prayer. In truth. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.